Welcome to H3's fifth annual open panel discussion about cancer event. My name is Jania Piazzetta, and I am the founder and director of H3 Health, Hope, Healing, a breast cancer 51C3 nonprofit organization. A little bit about H3's work. H3 Health, Hope, Healing educates the public about cancer prevention, awareness, and any topic related to cancer. In addition, H3 supports patients and survivors going through cancer treatment. Our strength is breast cancer, but we are always willing to support other cancer-related issues. H3 has done a great deal of work in our communities and has been recognized by the city of Miami Beach, Brazilian Folk Foundation in Broward, Florida International University, and you together with our communities. Thank you. Five years ago, I created this annual open panel discussion event because we were bombarded, still are, I believe, with the high rates of cancer diagnosis. And I felt obligated to bring together the experts in the cancer field to address this concern. Our first three open panel discussions cover many topics, including education on prevention, assessing conventional and alternative treatments, challenges related to interacting with the medical system and the future of cancer care. As we mentioned during the second panel, it begins with me. Our fourth and most recent panel discussion 2020 focused on the impact of COVID-19 on cancer diagnosis and assessing treatment. As we continue to be impacted by the pandemic, H3 is here today with our fifth open panel discussion on cancer and related challenges as we attempt to integrate back into our communities. Yet, new more dangerous COVID variants are making us cautious about resuming our previous activities and fearful for our health. For our, first, for our fifth open panel discussion, we'll focus on the following question in depth. COVID has invaded every aspect of our lives, social, political, financial, and possibly most importantly, our overall health. Studies indicate that cancer rates are declining. Is this a real finding or are new cases simply underreported because people are limiting medical care and treatment during the pandemic? Has the pandemic increased the risk and impact of other health related issues for cancer survivors, such as diabetes, obesity, and mental illness? Dr. Penalver, please, would you start our discussion? Sure. So um, in terms of new cancer diagnoses, these have definitely dropped during the early months of the pandemic. Um, but I don't really think it's a real finding. Um, and I think that we're going to see a rebound to uh, greater numbers, actually higher than expected in the months and years to come. Um, but this drop in 2020 um, is because of what you mentioned, Janina, it's because of limiting the medical care, decline in medical care, specifically in screenings, um, in biopsies, and in preventive care visits. So um, when the lockdown began at the beginning of the pandemic, we urged patients to stay home and to postpone their routine medical care. Um, so that all non-urgent care, such as these preventive visits, um, screenings, and elective surgery uh, were suspended in order to, you know, conserve the medical resources and help to limit the spread of the virus. But this um, suspension of medical care um, caused delays in cancer screening. It caused uh, delays in diagnosis, um, which resulted in later stage diagnoses with fewer treatment options or mo more intensive treatment and a probable lower um, likelihood of survival. And it also caused delays in cancer treatments with um, elective surgeries and radiation therapies being postponed 
and usually less intensive chemotherapy being used. But um, I think I think the the question um, is that will this um, will this delay in treatment have a significant impact on the outcome of our patients? And this is um, you know this is something tough to answer because we really don't have any data on this yet. But I think that. Um, this delay is going to depend or this impact is going to depend on two things. So um, it's going to depend on the biology of the tumor. So there's probably going to be a very uh, minimal impact for tumors that are slow growing, specifically in elderly women with hormone receptor positive tumors. These are the group of women that we treated with hormonal therapy during the pandemic. Um, but there may be an impact for the more aggressive or rapidly growing tumors. And then the second, um, the second thing to consider is the um, interruption, the length of interruption of cancer screening. So there was a study that looked at um, that looked at this and found that interruptions, short-term interruptions of three or four months, likely will not influence cancer stage. But we really don't know for the people that had a longer length of time of interrupting their screening how this will um, impact their outcome. Thank you, Dr. Payover. 